As an introduction, we like to acknowledge that our mission at Vos Library is to advance learning, inspire curiosity, enrich lives, and promote community. With this in mind, let me introduce our guests. Tim and Lori Warden invite you to come along on a three-week driving tour of the starkly beautiful country of Iceland. From the isolated West fjords to northern towns near the Arctic Circle to glaciers and iceberg lagoons in the south. Tim and Lori are about to take us along on the trip they enjoyed in September 2021. Without further ado, please help me welcome Tim and Lori. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, now you are going to scare. scare uh, do you want to start yeah. right off? Should we just start? Yes, I will slides? stop sharing and you can take it away. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks, De Deborah, I'm, I'm so glad to see everyone or yeah, hear you. everyone or be around everyone. Thanks for joining us and good to not have to go out on a chilly night. Nice yeah. to be home in our warm houses. You bet. All right, well, I think um, we'll just start. Okay, um, well, you know, we were really good people during the whole COVID thing um, and we stayed home and stayed safe and did all the things we were supposed to do, but we both really like to travel. So uh, we started to think about what's our next trip. Um, and we thought Iceland, it's not far away. Uh, we were watching the numbers, they were going down. So we said, well, maybe it's a nice time to, to plan a trip. So we went ahead and booked it. And in, and everybody I think sure thought we were crazy, but um, we felt very safe, safe the whole time. Uh, um, so anyway, why don't you start scratch? All right, I'll, I'll set up the whole techno thing here. Yeah. I mean, people, people wear masks, people, you know, keep distance as much as possible. There's hand sanitizer everywhere in the country, so. Um, it's loading. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Hold on. It's coming. There we go. There we go. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, so our flight from Boston, well, it took about five hours, so really not a bad um, flight. Um, you know, and the thing to remember as far as safety is everyone on that flight had to be fully vaccinated. You can't get on a flight internationally unless you also produce a 72 hour or a negative COVID test within 72 hours of boarding. So I felt safe. Um, so everyone flies into Reykjavik. That's where the international airport is. You want, and you this, is, is? this is the capital. This is their uh, federal building. There are about 389,000 people that live in Iceland and two thirds of them live in Reykjavik. So, um, and it's by no means crowded, let me tell you, but it just gives you an idea that the rest of the country, it, country is very sparsely populated. And you'll see pictures and you'll understand why. It's a, it's a very uh, Danish-like place. It used to belong to Denmark and it's, there's a lot of influence from from the rest of Scandinavia. This church was also designed to look like the basalt columns, which we'll see a lot later on. That's the inside, quite, quite plain, but very elegant. Here's some street scenes, three or four. They have a, they have a good, good quality of life. I mean, actually they're one of the happiest countries in the in the world, um, and I understand why um, everything's you know clean and taken care of. Um, it's a good it's a good place, good place to travel to. It's very safe. Oh, now I'm sure everyone knows that um, Icelandic is is known to be a really difficult language, and uh, so, and by the way, I will probably be mispronouncing a lot of things. So if anyone knows Icelandic, please bear with me, and I'm sorry for this. But this is Tim's going to explain this word. I was told <laughs> by a, an Icelander. Uh, um, that this was a special, this was a special uh, lock and key that belonged to a a specific type of road maintenance shack. So, oh, I and, guess. And I was hoping Tim would pronounce it for you. Ah, uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> can't pronounce it. Yeah, exactly. All so. Right. Oh, this is the map um, on the of the western side of the island. We started out in Reykjavik, which is right there, down there, just to give you an idea. And then we followed along. We did um, a, a clockwise route. Um, most people do the ring road. You probably have heard of that. That take it's like a it's called Route One, and it just kind of goes around. 
you know, the outside the country, but we, because, and they usually take like a week to 10 days to do that, Good. but we decided but, to but we take also longer. Took the, uh, so we did other, we did other peninsula. We would get out here and then we went up into the West Fjords, which you want to say. Yeah, we just diverted from the ring, which would otherwise just connect those, kind of connect those two right there. So I wish I could have a laser pointer. That'd be fun. Anyway, next, there's the other half. That's the Eastern side. In the middle of the country, you can see there's, there's ice caps. So there's not a lot of um, regular travel going through there, but there's plenty of helicopter rides and Jeep rides and, you know, you can hike and, you know, do other things like that to get in there, but it, it's not easy to access. And we didn't do it, but I'm guessing it's probably pretty expensive too, but I bet it's gorgeous. I bet there's amazing things to see there. So these, these pictures are all in sequence for our three weeks. So the, so what you see is what we saw over the, that course. So we left, uh, we left the city and it, you, it doesn't take long to get out of town. And this is what we began to see. So we'll take, we'll start to move ahead. Plenty of horses. Oh, these are the Icelandic horses. They, I wanted to bring every single one of them home with me. Um, and they're a beautiful breed of horse. I don't know if anyone knows, has ever ridden them or knows of these horses, but they're really sweet nature, sturdy as can be, um, can withstand the Icelandic weather. And horses there, they, you cannot bring a horse into Iceland because they do not want to mess with their, that's their breed. They don't want any interference with that breed. Really nice horses. Obviously of our old volcano, many of those. Well, it's beautifully vast, empty. That, that's the average biggest tree, although we saw bigger ones, but they're, they've been uh, planted. But that's, that's the extent of the... This was a little hike we went on. Um, we had heard that there was a, a nice waterfall. We took this hike and then we got to this place where there was rapids and there was a tree, lay, like a wet looking tree laying down across it. And, and we would have had to like cross over the tree and I'm not real crazy about water crossing. So we said, let's go look at uh, waterfalls elsewhere. <laughs> we had to walk through this cave to get to it. It's kind of cool. Just more scenery along the way. This is a little town called Bulgartness. This is not very far from Reykjavik, very close by. So it's still a little bit larger than most towns. This is a little town where we caught, uh, we spent two nights in. It's called Skykish Komer. And there's a juxtaposition of an older home quite nice shape and a new modern architecture that is happening around Iceland as well. It's a church. It's a church. <laughs> this is more traditional scenery that you'd see um, in the towns, obviously. Much like Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of the town and they're part of their harbor. Very, very nice, sweet little town. That's more of the town. And then we went from there out to the first peninsula that we went out to. I think it's pronounced Snafnelsnes or something like that. There is a national park out at the end, but it was um, just beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. The weather helped. You know, the yeah, inclement yeah. weather was was actually made some great great photos. Oh, now that is an interesting, um, that's called Kirkjufell. It's a beautiful, beautiful mountain. You see it for a long distance. It's just lovely. And again, we had some great lighting with the, with the stormy day that we had. And then there happens to be a little waterfall near it, which we were pretty excited about because it was like, oh, waterfall. Like little did we know three weeks later, we're like, yeah, big deal, another waterfall. But <laughs> All of them were lovely. A lot of waterfalls. That's the sort of the other side of that pointy. Uh, you can see the roads, they're all, nothing's more than two lanes unless you're in Reykjavik. And, and this is this is a live video, but the weather was so crazy, it would change every minute. Be sunny and then rainy and it's pretty, pretty interesting. But never rained that hard that you were like 
driven back to the car, although we did have some time. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. These are way off, kind of not. Yeah, that we hiked into. It was about two miles off the road. This is an interesting beach, um, very volcanic, uh, worn down uh, beach, but incredible uh, stones and rocks, very super volcanic. The reason why is because this is what those cliffs look like. They look like black cellophane. Of course, they were wet because it was foggy and misty. It was pouring rain. And that, so that's the solid rock, the way it looked. But this was the beach rock. And they were slippery and polished and very fabulous. And it, and it uh, was the site of a, a shipwreck back in the 30s, I think. And uh, um, there was, uh, it was strewn with you know old steel plates and parts and pieces of a ship. Well, if Couldn't a ship hit that, it. can you imagine a hull surviving that? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, but lovely place. Rainy. Oh, it rained I think hard. that looks like the set of, a, of The Hobbit. Anyway, a little further up the coast. Lighthouses were everywhere. This was a cleft in the, in the mountainside uh, carved out by that little stream over who knows how long. And you could actually walk way in there, but you would have had to walk through like a foot of water and our shoes were too short to, to uh, walk in that far and get wet, but it was pretty wild. This is a little video of a waterfall that couldn't. It was so windy that it was blowing it back up the hill. It was so windy that day. We were sitting in a parking lot. I get out to take some pictures. Tim wouldn't even get out of the car. And he watched the person in the car next to him and the passenger forgot to grab their door and it bent it back and <laughs> bent the side of their car. So that's how windy it was, but it was lovely. That's why I got out of the car. And we made it back to Skykish Colmer. And this was the next day. Nice little town. And we were leaving that day on the ferry to the West Fjords. And this, that boat there, the big one, was the, the uh, ferry boat. And it was a day of rainbows. Yeah, first it would rain, then it wouldn't, then it would rain. So for about two and a half hour ferry ride. So we got to the West Fjords. And as I've mentioned, um, this is where we arrived. Um, all of, all of Iceland is, is, you know, fit, is sparsely populated. About 10% of the tourists actually go to the West Fjords. It's not, it's not traveled very much. So. This, this descent, uh, this descent was uh, down to this town and was pretty hair. The road was new, but it was steep and going downhill was uh, exciting, but the roads were all nice. Well, well, I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them, most of them. And the next day we took a, we took a, a road less traveled, as you can see the one on, on the left, we didn't see anyone the whole day. And we walked out on, on this, uh, the side of this fjord, as you can see, it's pretty remote. And uh, just took a walk, parked the car, and walked up the road. Saw some interesting botany and a rock. Plenty of rocks. Another rainy day. <laughs> but not so bad that you couldn't just dress right. And that was the beginning of September. We, we arrived on September 2nd. So our temp, the daytime temperatures were probably in the low to mid 60s. And then as we traveled by the third week of September, it was starting to get to be in the mid fifties to now, 55, 57. We saw this road, or we saw this along a road that was in really bad shape. It was potholed and bumpy. It just slowed, slowed, slowed you down and made you look around more. But this was like this rock strewn uh, landscape, all these, rocks were like looked that's, like they had just been spit there yeah, by that's lava by. and then the moss has grown on it through the years it's really beautiful you see that all throughout the country we got to a place called uh the john d falls or, or 
the John de Foss or something. And this was the first in, in a series of falls that led up to the top of the mountain that you see behind. And now that's a different one. So that's the second one. These are more. And that's, that's it way up there. It's higher and higher. It's a quite, it's quite a hike. You can see the people there compared to the size of it. That I think is the most beautiful waterfall we saw. Yeah. I think it, that was my favorite. It was lovely. This is a little video of it. Kind of gives you some sense of the space. Of course, the noise you can picture. And uh, it was and there's the, low that's ceiling a, day. That, that's the fjord. Uh, these are the tunnels yeah. um there's they you know they they used to have towns that were just not accessible except by boat so they started to build these tunnels through the mountains and they're all one lane and i know that sounds like a scary thing but people there are very very polite but if you're driving and and the, there's a pullover lanes um pullover spots every now and then and if you're if the pullover spots are on your side then you, when you see headlights coming your way you pull in they pass you. When you see, you know, it's on their side, you just keep driving, they pull over. It's a little freaky, but you know, we, we out of yeah. five, four or five tunnels we were in, I think we saw a couple of cars and the whole time. Some were like six miles long. They were really impressive, you know, you, you know, carved from solid stone. So it's pretty wild. This was a little town, what was this? Uh, this is um, Sudarevi. We spent two nights there. It's a fishing village. And uh, as soon as you get out of the car, you open the door and you step out, all you can smell is fish. It's a fish processing area. This is the main street. I guess it would be a main street. Towns there are very different, not like what we think of. This is um, actually our hotel here that we spent two nights in. Restaurant is on the first floor. So a place called The Fisherman. It was a wonderful place. And then our room was upstairs. That's, there's a- And we drank some beer named after those falls. <laughs> Um, and this is a little town called is is a uh, is a fjord, which is uh, next door. Is a fjorder. And yeah, we walked along this cliff top, which was way above the uh, water. I think it was five hundred. Mm -hmm. No, uh, five hundred feet above the ocean. Pretty impressive. So wherever you see these pictures, these cliffs in our pictures, this is what it looks like up on top of those. It's real rocky, super jagged rocks with all this little mossy stuff growing. And these towns are little fish towns that- Yeah, that no, that's a typical, with. like that would be a fishing village. Um, you know, that's, that's why it's there. The guys would go out and fish and women would process the fish. This was a great spot to take pictures. It was a recreation of a, of a, of a probably a fishing. 19th century fishing uh, 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 settlement. And it was wonderful to take pictures there. There was no one around, just us. Well, we were in September. It's kind of considered off season, but to us, it was better. You can see the little place there on the water where they pulled their boats in. Oh, yeah. You can see where that's where they dragged their boats up. So it was, it was a nice little spot, nice little break. This was the road that the tunnel uh, replaced for obvious reasons, because uh, I think there was a little bit more uh, um, acorns that fell. That, we that went for a walk on it, and so we got an idea. Yeah, we were lo looking up the whole time. There's the whole there was, uh, parts of the road just caved it in. Was just a, it was just a walking path, but I think it was a walking path with risks. There's some botany very alpine this this was the icelandic lupin well uh, actually it was it was brought in from alaska when they tried when they they, they brought in some in, you know introduction plants just to kind of preserve the soils because you know they were realizing that things were eroding they did originally cut down all the trees but there's basically as you see there just aren't trees there um they did originally cut them all down but in some places um they uh they had a prime minister in the 1940s that said, hey, let's plant some trees. And around farms, you can see trees planted, probably for windbreaks. 
oh, this was a cute little coffee house that we found along the way. And we said, let's go in and, and had a morning break there. And this was a family's, you know, farmstead. And, you know, the parents lived there. It was adorable. I think Tim could barely stand up inside. Yeah, it was real short ceilings, like six feet, like six foot one. <laughs> But it was a lovely one along, along the fjord. We finally started to get some better weather, some blue skies. What's happened? Birds. Oh. Oh. Lots of sheep. There's about 349,000 sheep um, in the country and, you know, it's on the menu quite often. Lots of sweaters too. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> That's right. Things, things were flattening out some. Oh, this is a little town called Homovic. This is just before we're getting ready to leave the West Fjords. It's probably like the last town in the West Fjords. We stopped in there because some people that we knew we had met along the way we're gonna we knew where they were going to be spending the night and they were going to wanted to go there because it has an award-winning witchcraft museum but we we skipped that one we weren't really that interested but more sheep lovely little farm lots of hay fields it's like ireland <laughs> I hope I'm not going too fast, but I think we have to cover. We're going to look like it. We're watching like 300 pictures, so I've got to. Don't scare them. I've got to scare them. This is a little town called um, Hofsis. It's a small fishing village. It was a trading center back since night. Uh, the 1500s and um, very small town but these two women that live there decide they want to give it a reason to be on the map so you'll see what they built in a minute so it's just still a working harbor and they built a swimming pool Icelandic people really like to swim they have a lot of geothermal um, areas of course and um, they they like their they like their pools that's like that's like going to the pub to them is to go and socialize in the pool so This is a little town called, well, it's got a really long name, but Siglo is the name. Um, it's about, well, about 1,200 people that live in the town. It was the herring um, fishing capital of Iceland until the 60s. And at that point, they had like 10,000 people living in town. But now it's down to, like I say, 1,200 people. They did put a, build a tunnel to get to there from the south, because before then, it really wasn't accessible. But it's now, it's an up and coming. They have festivals, music festivals, and a herring festival. So we're, um, we... yeah. Okay. This is a, like, this is Akureyri, which is the next second biggest town in Iceland. Uh, it has about 18,600 people. Um, and for some reason, this is the only picture we have of it. We're not big city people. So we just took a quick picture. I think it was after dinner one night. They have a, a botanic garden there. It's the northerly most botanic garden in the world. <laughs> We went for a hike. We went up, we went up, uh, took a good long hike up a steep hill. It was fun. And these are um, turf houses um, that we came across, just a little thing along the road. We stopped to look to see what it was. Um, this is a church that was built there in 1865 and the inside of the church. And the pulpit was built, was built in 1698. Um, so very old and great condition. That's the peat. Uh, that's how, how they'd stack the peat to build the, the yeah. houses. It was a museum. This uh, is the large turf house. This was built right after the church. So like in 1866 to 70. More sheep. More sheep. Salmon River, the real famous one called the Laxa. I, it was late for the fishing season. This is Husavik, which is um, not too far from the Arctic Circle. 
This is the whale watching capital of Iceland. It's a very scenic little town, beautiful boats, and there's about 2,300 people that live there. Okay, this area is called Ausbergi. It's at the northern end of the Vatna Jokul National Park, which is one of the largest national parks in Europe. And it covers about 13% of Iceland. It has this massive like horseshoe canyon. So um, we spent like probably a whole day by the time we got done hiking. They think that this was formed by like an, a, an eruption under a, an ice cap quite a while, quite a ways away, caused a glacial flood. It gouged out the canyon in just within a few days. The canyon's about a half a mile wide, just over two miles long. And the rock that it left behind is just, it's uh, fascinating. It's just... See, that arrow is pointing at me. So you get some, uh, some sense of how tall that is. Fascinating place. There's a close up. I think it's a geologist's dream country to be in. These are these are basalt columns, is what they're called. Cool place. Oh yeah, we saw two of these type of things. Uh, these like grottos that the vault volcano built somehow, but they were fascinating. They, and there were this this was one of two. Oh, this is Dedafoss. And then we're getting, getting get into the land of the bigger um, waterfalls. These are unbelievable. This is probably the most impressive waterfall we saw. It's 147 feet high and 328 feet wide. Now, try to picture this. There's 105,000 gallons of second of water that goes over this falls. It's the greatest volume of any waterfall in Europe. It's, 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 and you know how pictures are, they don't do it justice, <laughs> but it's, And there's no fences to keep you from no. walking off the edge, which is great because it doesn't muck it up. This was upstream. This was an, uh, maybe a mile or two further up that same river, right in, like the, the big falls were to our left of this. Oops, I'm sorry. So then from there, we went to this area called the, um, the Nevat region. This has a lot of uh, like um, geothermic area. It's got mud pots, weird lava formations. Um, that's the nature baths that they have there. We did go in those, they were wonderful. They have like steaming, oh, that's Lake Mivat in the background. That's a big summer community for birds. Really, I think that's where birders go. So this is that area with mud pots and and fumaroles and volcanic craters. So, but it's a this big tourist area. Makes this like hum and buzz. I can't quite describe it. So it's a lovely area. I mean, it was interesting. And it smelled like eggs, bad eggs. And if anyone likes Game of Thrones, this is the cave. Um, that where they filmed the scene um, with Jon Snow was with some woman and you know he was no longer innocent when he left the cave. The water temperature is about 113 degrees. <laughs> that was a, we were walked we were walking up a volcano, that path that you see kind of in the middle and that's another crater in the background. Um, and here's the crater or the volcano. You can go all, you can walk all the way around it. There's a trail, you see the trail and look here, right up there, you look close, you start to see little bodies up there just to give you again, some scale on how, how huge that is, it's massive. Oh, this is that second one. Very interesting, sort of fold in the... From there, we drove heading now toward the Eastern part of the country. And we just went for miles of this volcanic ash and really nothingness. Just like two endless, hours. Endless, endless, endless. No one came up behind us. We probably passed two or three cars heading in the opposite direction. But you just, it just goes on and on. Things, then things began to get green. Mm -hmm. This is a little town called Sadisfjörder. Um, has a population of 650. I wish we could have spent more time in this area, but we were kind of booked into places. It's a very artistic community. And you can see they have- There's some boats that go to the 
Faroe well, Islands. Those are cruise ships. Those are cruises. No, that that was the one of them was the ferry. So you can see the artistic influence. That nice little town, fun place to be. Boats get old there too. Another waterfall. Back out in the There's endless, <laughs> the endless, nothingness. endless nothingness. <laughs> really cool though. Kind yeah. of a Another volcano old. Uh, I don't know if that was. We saw some tundra swans otherwise known as Arctic swans. And uh, we see them around in that area, pretty often. Just in yeah. that area. This was a hot tub at a little uh, guest house. Middle of nowhere. <laughs> now this is, we're heading out down. No, we're kind of still. We're on the East Coast. Yeah, we're on the East Coast. This is the biggest trees I think we saw there. Again, I could have brought them all home. And then we had, we had a couple of nice days <laughs> without rain. It was spectacular. But the mountains, the clouds stuck to the, the cliffs here, like, like really odd. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> this was the east coast of Iceland. These mm -hmm. rocks had a funny greenish hue. I don't know if the camera quite caught it, but it was striking. If you stood back, you go, wow, those are a, a green rock. This was cool. I this... decided to tell, hey, there's a black sand beach. Let's go for a walk. So we walked down to it and we walked and we walked and we walked forever. And it felt like we hadn't gotten anywhere. And then I just said, all right, never mind. Let's go back. <laughs> and once again, the rocks were like polished and like agates. Lovely. We saw these tundra swans again hanging around. Now, this is down on the southern coast. This is called uh, Iceberg Lagoon, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is in Icelandic. Oh gosh. But uh, we saw, this was a, a, a glacier way up and back created this atmosphere, this, this uh, weather. And uh, watch, you gotta watch this. This is, we saw these float down from the glacier and then eventually make their way out to the ocean, which is not far behind us. You can see a boat out off to the right. That's a tour boat. And then there'll be a tender behind it. Um, you can rent kayaks there to go out and kayak around the the, um, the uh, glaciers as well. It's, it, it was beautiful. You could you could sit and watch this for like an hour. I, you know, it was just fascinating. And then they finally make their way out to sea there underneath that bridge. And then they go out to this place uh, that the that it's called Diamond Beach, because uh, as these things wash up on, on the black beach, um, they, they become ice like cubes. <laughs> they, they look like diamonds. That's a, that's that's a glacier. Yeah. It's, a, it's not a very sharp picture because mm -hmm. it's zoomed in, but it's just massive. Here's another one. They're all over the place. The whole southern coast, it's all, you know, you'll have some farming land and then the glaciers kind of come down, little fingers of, of glacier. And you can walk in and walk up to the base of them if you want. And then you can do tours to go on them. This was kind of a rainy day. <laughs> this was a very fascinating mm -hmm. place. This is the start. Uh, it's a canyon that was carved out. They had a walkway up above it, but there was no walk down below in it, which would have been nice too, but then it might've changed the canyon. So it was, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, you couldn't, it, you don't get tired of seeing that either. 
unfortunately, Justin Bieber beat us to it in 2015 and put it on Instagram. And, and then I read that he, he also made the natives angry because he did some scene of being out on some moss area that, you know, is, is um, oh. someplace you shouldn't have been. So bad beaver, bad beaver. Beautiful place though. Yeah. This is a little town of Vic, again, on the southern coast. There's a population of 320. A lot of people will go to Vic if, they're, if they only have like two or three days in the country and they can get there from Reykjavik in, you know, like, I don't know, a couple of hours. And this was one heck of a windy day. <laughs> I can't tell you how windy that was. That was, I mean, you had to check your, check your balance. Here's a very, here's a great example of the the basalt columns. Boys. And they had these, they had these uh, signs that warned you about these rogue waves that could come and swallow you off the beach. I believe them. especially windy. Another lighthouse. This was a glacier to the right. It was a, it was a, a hike, a hike to it. Same thing, like a lagoon full of glacier pieces. This was a beautiful falls. This is Skaga Foss, which was just lovely. It, it's, you know, just beautiful, big, big ones. And this was on the top of the hill up above the falls, looking back towards the ocean. From somewhere around there. Yeah, this- And, and they, we walked way up above that, yeah, up was along a, the river. There was a walk, you know, staircase that went up along the side where it was real steep. And then they had a trail that we could go up above and see all the little series of small waterfalls above. Oh, look, another waterfall. This one is called uh, Sel Jolandis Foss. And this one, again, we had another rainy day, but this one was unusual. You could walk behind it and you can see people doing that. Um, there was a trail that you could walk behind. It was, it was pretty, it was interesting. This was back towards uh, Reykjavik. We had a couple days there at the end of our trip, so we drove drove around the area. This was a big, starkly moon-like area, and this this was an old cinder uh, or a um, not a cinder cone. Lava What's it called? Cone? Lava. Uh, a lava tube is lava called, tubes. and the uh, the cinders would you know over time have been washed away. But very oh, this was also an interesting spot in that same sort of area. This is this is the rift between the two continents. So if you were to think of the north, the North American plate and the European plate, this is where they meet, and uh, it goes down through the center of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, another lighthouse. Oh, another oh one. different lighthouse. More lava rocks. Yeah, this is how the 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 mosses kind of grow over time. Oh gosh, another More horse. horses. Another. Who gets tired of horses? Okay, this is yet another waterfall. This is Gullfoss, another one of the absolute huge ones. Um, and to be there, oh, this was a rainy day too. But to be there, you know, it's incredible. It's like. Yeah, it's a walkway and you could get quite close to it. So this is, you probably have heard of the Blue Lagoon that's down near the airport in Reykjavik. Um, very, you know, huge um, tourist attraction to, you know, to swim in the Blue Lagoon. This is a geyser. Um, 
Stroker geyser, it, it's active. There's another one, the Great Geyser nearby. That one gushed for 800 years, but it's now gone dormant. But people are happy to see this geyser. So there we go. That's it. So we've, uh, we've traveled around Iceland. So one of the things, um, tourism jumped in 2010 when that volcano that starts with an E that erupted, um, they said tourism between 10, 2010 and 2017 increased 444%. There were about 2.2 million tourists in 2017. So the country was not ready for it when it first happened, but they have since um, you know, done a lot to increase you know, building hotels and infrastructure you know, for tourism. They say it has, the tourism has leveled off a bit because the Krona, their monetary system is um, gotten stronger and prices are higher. Stop share. Um, so anyway. Um, Iceland is a very progressive country. It, uh, just to give you an idea, it was the first, you just say, okay. Oh, no. Are we, are we good? No. <laughs> yep, that's good. We can hear you and see you. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> good. I thought we did something wrong. Um, but anyway. In Iceland in 2018, they were the first country in the world to um, require that men and women be held, paid equally. Um, we took over 2,200 photos and thank goodness you only had to see 300 of them. We drove about 2,500 miles and we walked about 92 miles in our three weeks and we're ready for any questions. <laughs> Holy smokes. I feel like I've been to a different world. That was awesome. So I will let people, you know, just if you want to put questions or comments in the chat, or if you want to unmute and ask Lori and Tim your questions, please feel free. Hello. Hey guys. Oh, go ahead. This is Diane. Um, I was wondering how carefully you had to schedule your accommodations or were you able to be spontaneous about it? on your drive or was everything planned out? Well, this was the first time we ever did a trip that everything was planned out. And would we do it again? No. <laughs> um, oh, hi, Diane, I didn't realize it was you. Um, and uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely have done differently, but um, I, we were traveling off season. What we've heard is that traveling in July and August, that the peak of the season that you really do have to book ahead, you really have to plan ahead because you know, you see how big the towns are. There's just not a lot. There are guest houses that you can stay in. Most of them seem to have like a shared bathroom just because they're not, you know, they're not to say, you know, they're not like totally equipped for the amount of people that come. But it's still a great place. I was curious about the tides. How, how high are the tides there? Um. They were probably equivalent to ours. Uh, um, it, it's I probably a little more. I would say they're probably a twelve foot tide. Okay. Great, great show. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. Did you go fishing? Uh, no, but I, uh, I I actually got there past. I was there for about a week uh, until the season ended, and I wasn't prepared. Um, uh, but I would love to go back and, and, and salmon fish. That'd be the place to go. Oh, yeah. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> the tree looks nice. Um, you know, another interesting thing about Iceland is that we never had cash in our hands. We only use a credit card. A credit card for every single thing, no matter how small. <laughs> so we never had to exchange money. So... And internet connection everywhere. Yeah. Um, in the hotels we stayed in, they all had internet, obviously. But our rental car company, we didn't ask for it. They just gave us like a hotspot. And they said, here, just use this whenever you're not at your hotel. So if we need, did need to look something up, we had internet. And so it was great. Didn't didn't cost anything. Yeah. So that was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Any other questions? I think we put everyone to sleep. <laughs> How, was the food? How was the food? What was your oh. typical meal in a restaurant or 
our house? Uh, they were great. I mean, uh, probably a little more trouble for her because she can't eat meat, but uh, I think the food was fine. It was fine. Yeah, very good. I mean, I did find finally find some good places that would serve more vegetarian types of things, but like in the West Fjords, you know, there's not much there. Fish, um, Tim made a lot of salmon and cod was really another popular fish. Um, trying to think yeah. ones you ate. Uh, Mostly that. Yeah. And, you know, they have cows, so beef and, and lamb and, and, you know, all the things. They have, they have weird fish, like, you know, like, um, what do they call it? It's like that pickled, it's not more than pickled. It's like rotten cod and stuff. <laughs> it's just, it's just really weird stuff. You know? <laughs> stuff that you don't want to hear, you know, stuff that they send off your neighbors with. I'm not sure, but they eat it. Man, a lot of a lot of times when we stayed in hotels, um, which we did the whole time, we booked ahead. We booked ahead with this group, this tour thing. It wasn't really not what I'd do, but um, it was a self tour. Well, it wasn't no, we, yeah, we just had to get to that next town, you know. But uh, they all, most of the hotels had restaurants, and they hire actually when we start to meet the people in the hotels, they're all from Bulgaria, you know, Poland, you know, those countries. And they, you know, one guy who's he'd been cooking there for seven years, he comes back year after year. So, so it was interesting. So that's necessarily Icelandic. So Tim and Lori, uh, Anne said, thanks for a lovely presentation. Fascinating. And her question is, were you able to make connections with people in Iceland or did COVID keep you pretty much separated? Well, we didn't, um, you know, we, I think because we stayed in hotels, I think we didn't meet as many local people as we would have liked. You know, if we'd stayed more in guest houses, we would have met more, you know, obviously meet the people that own the guest houses. Um, so we didn't meet as many that way. We did meet other travelers. We had one couple yeah. from Germany that we kept bumping into. Um, and then we would meet people. We went to a lava center and um, he, we met a wonderful guy at this lava center. And he actually knew of Maine and, and he, um, had he had some friends here. Yeah, he had, he had a, a guy that Camden. just recently moved to Camden. So we were like, oh. So, you know, it was kind of odd because nobody, nobody knows where Maine is in the, in the, you know, in the Alps. They always say up in the, up in the corner of the U.S. by Canada. Yeah. <laughs> they also always ask if, oh, do you live in, you know, is it near New York? No, nah. no, that's what they know. That's what they know New York. So, <laughs> so oh, well. is English widely, widely spoken English? Very, yes. very much. Yeah, it's very easy to talk to anyone they all speak English. we met one um icelandic woman out on a hike in that in one of those canyons and i was just trying to get some directions from her like do we go this way do we go that way which way do we go and she obviously she could talk a few words and then she was pretty uncomfortable and then i she, think she was kind of running away from she us. got the gist of it she's pointed her fingers and yeah but oh, okay. she didn't know where what we wanted and we didn't know what she was saying but we kind of followed her because we thought she was probably going back to her car so <laughs> Poor woman, terrorized her. But, um. <laughs> um, people are thanking you in the chat for your advent, sharing your adventure. Uh, other questions people have? Do you find that most people stay put? Those that are from Iceland, do they do they stay there their lifetime? There was a lot of immigration, you know, things were not that good in Iceland, you know, years ago, and they got hit really hard with the 2008 thing. So I think a lot of them did leave to find a better life. And, and, and Iceland is part of the EU, of course, so yeah. they, they can travel freely. But now they've learned their lesson and they're not putting all their cards, their eggs in one basket or whatever you want to say. They're, I think they're on good steady ground just as much as anybody could be. Oh, Mary. Um, so, um, no, they do, they do go, they do get out and yeah, they do, they do go other places. Um, yeah, I know we met a couple from a town called Hup, even though it's pronounced H-O-F or spelled H-O-F-N. And when we met them at Akureyri one night and they were like, you know, we've lived here our whole lives and we've never been to the West Fjords. <laughs> it's like, you, have, you know, yeah. are you kidding me? You know, but they were like, no, we've never been there. So. <laughs> oh. so 
I'm glad you I mentioned. Up- I'm glad you mentioned the high percentage, the influx, because a lot of people have either been or are talking about going. And I wondered about, you know, are they are they ready? Are they prepared? Because once a place becomes popular, there's a major yeah. shift. Well, there were there were hotels in every 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 town. They might not be big hotels. But there's, they're building more. I mean, the Foss hotels were- They're mostly building in Reykjavik. There were a lot of them. That's the only place they were building was Reykjavik. Well, they were, no, they were they were along the coast there. We saw the new one and we stayed in that one in, mm-hmm. in Skykish Calmer. But there's, they can, it's, they, they have two, yeah. two million folks yeah. a year. So it's they can- 2.2, yeah. A lot of yeah. rooms mm-hmm. where you sleep on ice. And and they do a lot of camping. I mean, they have camper vans and people do a lot of camping. Um, but I don't think I was really when the campgrounds we saw, I wasn't really impressed with them. They were they were a little bit, you know, rough around the edges. Um, well, they're out in the open. There's nothing. Yeah, there's, to, no, there's, there's no it's just like parking in a field. Yeah. But no trees around or anything. So it's like the wind gets blowing like a parking lot kind of. Yeah. A beautiful parking lot. If yeah. It's got a view. Yeah, there are views everywhere. That's the thing. You're never without a view. There's no, there's no walls to block your vision. So it's a, it's a, it's a neck turner country. You, know, you can always have something to see. I love those places. <laughs> well, uh, I'm just eager to find out what your next adventure will be and where we get to go with you again. This was fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Any other yeah. questions for for Tim and Lori this this evening? You're you're watching all the thank yous in the chat, right? You're seeing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Let me do my little exit here. My little conclusion. Thank you. So thank you, Deborah, for all your help. Well, yeah. Thank you. It. So thank you all for joining us and. Um, We hope that you'll spread the word and join us on Wednesday, December 15th, when artist Randy Fine will explore her pottery exhibit at Vos Library. It'll be a pre-recorded presentation, but she will also be joining us from her studio at home. So that's next Wednesday. Good night, everybody. Be well and stay healthy. Thanks, Tim and Lori. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye.